and welcome to Fayette County Public Library Storytime. Our first story today is The Lazy Gnome. Harold was a happy farmer until the day a gnome arrived. This place looks good, said the gnome. I think I'll stay. Harold couldn't get rid of him. So this old man here, the farmer, is Harold and the lazy gnome. At first, the gnome helped on the farm, but one day he went on strike and refused to do anything. That wasn't all. From now on, I want half of everything you grow, he shouted at Harold. Harold didn't like that at all, so he agreed, but decided he would trick the gnome. Okay, you can have half of the next crop. Do you want the top or the bottom half? Hmm, said the gnome, the bottom half. That spring, Harold planted wheat in his fields. At harvest time, Harold took the top of the wheat and had sacks full of grain. The gnome got stalks. Grr, you tricked me, I meant half of the field. Next year, I'll take the top of the crop, said the gnome. So Harold planted turnips. At harvest time, Harold had piles of turnips. The gnome got the top of the plant, leaves. The gnome was very angry. Next year, grow wheat again, he shouted. You could cut half the field and I'll cut half. And whoever finishes first can take all the wheat. A race. Yes, I'm small and fast, so I'll win. So when the wheat was ready to cut, Harold went to the village blacksmith. He had a plan, but it needed lots of thin iron rods. I'm off to sow a late crop, he said. That night before the race, Harold crept out to his field. He stuck the thin iron, iron rods among the wheat on the gnome's half of the field. And he said, you don't beat me so easily. Next day, Harold's sieve swished through the wheat easily. But the gnome's sieve kept hitting the rods. This wheat is very tough, he said. Every time the gnome tried to cut the wheat, his scythe hit a rod. Soon it would not cut at all. Look at it, all broken. The gnome was so angry, he shouted at Harold, How dare you trick me again? I'm leaving. And in a temper, he threw down the scythe and stormed off. Harold never saw him again. Isn't that what Harold wanted in the first place? Yeah. Okay, Miss Lisa. All right. So, um, Harold and the gnome had a little contest, didn't they? They got food from the top or food from the bottom. And I have here a stack of cards with different vegetables on it. And so I'm going to have you pick one and tell us if it was, if the vegetable is at the top of the plant or if it grows under the ground. So if it's at the top of the plant, we're going to put them over here by Miss Kim. And if it grows under the ground, we're going to put them over here. So. Mr. Clayton, you're first. Why don't you draw one and tell us what you've got. Do the ground on the bottom and the Just follow the rule. Okay, what'd you get? Green beans. Green beans. Okay, are they on the top? Do they grow on top of the ground or under the ground? We're going to put on top right here. Okay, good job. Okay, you're next. Pick one out. And what do you have? Carrots. Carrots. Are they on top or under? Where are they? On top or under? Under. Under the ground. So why don't we stick them way down over here? We'll put unders there and on tops up here. How's that? All right. Alexis, you're next. Pick one. What we got? Pumpkin. On top or under the ground? They grow on top. Okay, so we're going to put the tops up here and the bottoms down there. Okay, that works too. All right. All right. Up next, come pick one. 
What do we have? Onions. Onions. Oh, that one's a pretty one. They grow on top or under the ground? Um, I'm not sure. Look at the white, the white part. The white part is <coughs> under the ground. The green part sticks up, but the part we eat is under the ground. So stick them over here by the carrots because they go under the ground. That's where they grow. Okay, we're going back to Layton. Pick another one. What do we have? Potato. Oh, is that on top or under? Okay. I think we're going to go ahead and put it this way. That potatoes are under the ground, so are onions and carrots. Pumpkins and beans are on top. We've got a couple more to go. What do you got? Corn. Corn. So is that on top or under? You see corn. Corn grows where? Way up tall, right? They're taller than you when they're done growing. Corn's tall. It grows on top of the plant. Okay, Alexis. Alexa. Alexa. Okay, what do you got? Green. What is that? Um, broccoli. 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 <laughs> My favorite food. Yeah? Is it on top or do we have to dig it up under the ground? Well, that... Well, luckily, because I don't like broccoli. It I'm grows really up on top of the plant. I think it is. I, I didn't learn that. All right. Here's yours. Come pick one. Which one will it be? And then there's one for me. You have to pick one? All right. What did you get? Because I saw the other one was purple. Okay. What is that? Um, uh... So this yes. cucumbers, are they on top or do we have to dig I them up? I think then I help them. I think they're on top. They're on top. They grow on a vine. The rain wasn't working. And our last one. Radishes. Radishes. And we have to dig those up. They grow under the ground. Okay. So there's a pretty cool activity to try to figure out where our vegetables grow. Because some of them are under the ground. Some of them grow on top of the plant. So our next story is about an animal that lives under the water. Okay, take a look at that fish. That's a big fish, isn't it? It's called jangles. If it was under the dirt, I'd, I'd guess, first guess, I'd guess worm. Okay, jangles, and this is a big fish story. Look at that little boy. He's going to be telling the story. When the sun goes down, and the weather is just right. Big Lake gets smooth as glass, and a thin mist whispers across it. That's when you might catch a glimpse of Jangles. Now, my father told me lots of stories, but my favorite was about a giant trout that he saw when he was just a kid. I still remember sitting with him in front of the big stone fireplace at the cabin. He pulled out a dirty green tackle box and shook it a couple of times so that it rattled. And then he told me this story. When I was a kid, Jangles was the biggest fish anyone had ever seen or heard. That's right. You could hear Jangles. He'd broken so many fishing lines that his huge crooked jaw was covered with shiny metal lures and rusty old fish hooks of all shapes and sizes. They clinked and they clattered as he swam, and that's why we called him Jangles. Jangles. Now, Jangles was so big, he ate eagles from the trees that hung out over the lake and full-grown beavers that, stayed too, that strayed too far from home. Do fish usually eat birds and beavers? But Jangles does. Well, sharks are the only things that yeah. Now, he didn't seem to care too much for the taste of kids. In fact, people swear one time Jangle saved a baby who fell into the lake when his family's canoe tipped over. They say that he took that baby up so gently that none of the hooks even stuck it, and he swam it to shore. 
Supposedly, he gave the baby's mama a dirty look as if to say, what are you doing bringing your precious little baby out here in this old tippy canoe? Mm. Everyone wanted to catch Jangles. They held big tournaments with lots of prize money, but no one could bring him in. He was too smart and too strong, and he had lived deep down in the middle of the lake. They tried all sorts of tricks, like even using a whole turkey for a bait. And there's a turkey right there. They got him on a hook. Do you think Jangles would go for that whole turkey? Maybe. Yes. Eagles. One fellow even tried dynamite. He threw big cans of tuna fish into the water and waited till he heard Jangles coming. Then he lit a sack of dynamite and tossed it into the lake. I don't know if it hit a rock or something, but that dynamite came flying right back out of the water and into his boat and, flew and blew it up to some smithereens. He had to swim all the way back to his dock, and he said that Jangles had come up and bumped him on his bottom. But nobody believed him. Mm. One time when I was just about your age, I was fishing over to where the creek comes into the lake, and my anchor came loose. I was concentrating so hard on catching a fish that I didn't notice that I was drifting out into the middle of the lake. There wasn't another single soul there with me, and it was getting dark. Just when I realized where I was, I felt a tug on my line. Not a real big tug, but it was something was on the other end of the line, I could tell. I started to reel it in, and it was wiggling all right, but it really didn't feel like a fish. I finally got it in, and what do you know, I had snagged an old fishing rod that someone must have dropped out of a boat long time ago. I started to reel that one in, too, and I cranked and I cranked, and I finally, at the end of it, it was getting closer to the surface, and I heard a sound that made my whole body feel prickly. It was kind of soft at first. I heard a little tinkle, tinkle, dangle, jingle, and then it started getting louder, tingle, jingle, jangle. Now, I used to daydream all the time about catching jangles, but right then I was scared to death, and then I saw the lure at the end of my line, and a gigantic shadow came out of the deep darkness and swallowed it up. My rod bent nearly in half, and I was hanging on to it like I was my first dollar when Jangle suddenly swam under the boat and pulled me right over to the side and into the cold black lake. Down we went like a crazy horse and buggy. Pretty soon, I noticed that I could still breathe. And the water wasn't even cold anymore. Can people breathe down deep under the water? No, oh, no, something strange is happening, huh? Finally, we came to a cave in the deepest part of the lake. It was decorated with parts of old boats and lots of rods and reels. This is my home, said Jangles. It's been a long time since I've had a visitor. His voice was so low and soothing that it seemed perfectly natural that this fish was talking to me. And so I wasn't afraid at all. <laughs> then Jangles told me stories, stories that were amazing and wonderful about the beginning of the earth before there were even people, stories about the wise old redwood trees and about animals that were silly and great fish that lived before him in the lake. It was like Jangles was my magic uncle, and after a while I started getting sleepy, and I said, it's time for me to go now. He told me to hang on to the big fin on his back. I still had the old rod in my hand, and as we swam up and out of the water, it turned from black to purple. I slowly pulled some line and made a bunch of long loops. When we reached the surface, Jangle swam alongside my boat. Quick as a minnow, I hopped off of the fish's back and threw the coils of line around him. And then with a sharp yank, I spun him upside down. Now, you might not know this, but when you turn a fish upside down, even a big old smart fish like Jangles, it gets very confused, and it can hardly move. It's sort of like the fish is paralyzed. Gotcha, I shouted. Jangles just lay there, 
but he could still talk. You tricked me, he cried. I told you secrets from the beginning of time, and this is how you thank me? You are a fish, I said, and I have caught you. Set me free, Jangles urged. I am more than a fish. I am a storyteller, and I am a story. A story that no one's going to believe if I let you go, I said. And then Jangles asked me, is that more important than doing what is right? Mm. I thought about all the wondrous things I had heard that day. I thought about the people dragging whole turkeys around the lake. You're right, I said. I'm sorry. I will set you free. But what can I do to apologize? I swear Jangles just grinned at me with that big, crooked, jingly jaw of his. There is one thing that you can do to help me, he said, and it would also prove that you really did catch me. That's when my dad stopped telling his story, and he gave me a look into his tackle box. It was full to the top with shiny metal lures and rusty old fish hooks of all shapes and sizes. He never told anyone about catching that giant fish, and he had kept it a secret until that night when he told me. And now I'm telling you. So what happened? How do we know that he really did catch Jangles? Because he has every single hook that was on him. All of these were in Jangles' I mouth, remember right? I seeing that fish in his mouth. Yeah, and so he, he de-lured Jangles, and so now he can swim around the pond without anyone hearing him anymore, right? No, no one will be able to. So do we believe this story? Jangles. Is it the big giant fish story, wasn't it? Jangles. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool story. Yeah, All right. I, I, it's pretty hard to say it's true, though, isn't it? Do you know one reason why that story might not be true? Because there's not a fish that's bigger than an eagle, except for, like, a shark or mm -hmm. whale or something. That's except, one reason. Except pe people can't, like, um, breathe underwater. Yep, exactly. And fish can't even talk. Yep. Sort of um, like, go ahead. Yep. Sort of like a tall tale, mm -hmm. okay? Something that yep. probably really wouldn't happen, but it's a cool story, isn't it? That was exactly the reason I thought about Alexa. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we, yep. you know what? Does this, it's supposed to be summertime in this story. Does this make sense to you that we have roses and daisies and green grass? Well, it might not look green. <laughs> and, <laughs> and a big snowball? Does that make sense to you? No. No, yes, no. It can't be spring and summer and even winter. All at the same time. Fall. Well, you'll have to decide what you believe about this story today. Look, there's even a butterfly. Oh. Zoomer summer snowstorm. Summer snowstorm. Looky there at that big ball rolling down the hill. <laughs> Bowling. I played bowling before. Yeah. Bowling. Okay. Snowball bowling. Hey, Mom! Yelled Zoomer. It's really, really hot outside. <clears throat> Can I have a snow cone? On one condition, said Mom. I know, I know, said Zoomer, that I clean up the kitchen when I'm done. Now, do you see anything in this story that makes you wonder if it could be true? No, there's a dog, nope. there's a dog. <laughs> we a book with a necklace, and the dogs are talking, and there's a tricycle, and there's a fish reading a book. Okay. I think that's funny. The fish okay. is reading Moby Dick. <laughs> okay. They can talk. They can't. They like, this will look like a car, but, it, but she's wearing a necklace. Mm hmm he were in car, mm -hmm. but it's real. But yeah. They can't talk. She reading the book. This yeah. book's reading There's lots of reasons, aren't there? Reading a book. I try school in here, and then they so Yeah, lots and talk. lots of reasons. Okay, so this is probably make-believe. Zoomer switched on the snow cone machine and looked through the cupboards. Hmm, let's see, he thought. What flavor do I want? After making his choice, he turned around and saw his snow cone was now about three feet deep. 
Uh-oh, thought Zoomer. I'd better get the mop. Uh-oh. <clears throat> He'd better get the mop. But after thinking about it, Zoomer decided to put on his hat and mittens and open the kitchen window instead. As usual, the twins had something to say to their little brother. Hey, what's with the hat and mittens? asked Hooper. Yeah, said Cooper. It's like 100 degrees out here. Not for long, replied Zoomer. It's zero. He opened the window and out came all the snow cone. The hot summer weather suddenly turned icy, cold as winter came pouring into the backyard. I'm t, -t telling said Hooper, shivering. Why, said Zoomer, I already asked Mom for permission. To turn s summer into w winter, Cooper said, his teeth chattering. we supposed to practice our baseball game with this in the way, complained Hooper. I guess we'll just have to play around it, Cooper said with a huff. So while Hooper and Cooper griped about the freezing weather, Zoomer got right to work taking advantage of the first snowstorm of the season. You can't eat that. <laughs> it's not even real. It can't like pop in when it's like that. After Zoomer had finished his snow sculpture, he decided it needed some company. So look at that. He just carved a duck out of it all. He needed some company. company. So he built his very own wildlife sanctuary filled with animals and creatures from near, far, yesterday, and beyond. <laughs> and there's a ancient Egypt thing and dinosaurs mm -hmm. and even he made a nest and a whale mm -hmm. and a unicorn. On there are lots of animals he there. Can. Okay. I can't. He, I can't believe he made a whale, dolphins, and a volcano. <laughs> yeah. And he made. That, a mermaid, a mermaid. <laughs> a mermaid, a mer-dog. A mer-dog. Yeah, that's a, a mer-dog. Yeah, that, that's okay. so Shh. good. That's Later, Zoomer took a hot chocolate break in the polar empire of Zoomartica and gave his brothers a friendly little wave. Don't look, whispered Hooper. You're only encouraging him. You have to admit, though, whispered Cooper, that is pretty cool. What the penguins are in, in like the forest? Uh, there's a lot to see on these pages. He made a whole snow castle. Yes, he did. I can't believe oh, it's that. Oh, a snow train. Toot, toot, shouted Zoomer. Hey, said Hooper. Can't you see we're trying to practice here? But when Zoomer began building... An amusement park. Their mittens went on faster than a happy puppy's wagging tail. Now that's pretty cool. There is really one thing I wonder about all this though. That's an awful lot of snow to do all that. <laughs> a lot of ice cones. When Zoomer's tummy grumbled that it was close to dinner time, he scampered to the kitchen and cleaned up all the snow. As Zoomer finished, Mom and Dad came in. Zoomy, said Mom, you look hungry. What would you like for dinner? <laughs> He's, I, I think he was trying to fool them with that. Hurried up and got rid of all that snow and then jumped in the cookie jar. <laughs> And the mom thinks she was... Chili! Yip Zoomer! Chili? exclaimed Mom. Yeah! said Zoomer. 
on a really, really cold day like today, a big, hot, steaming bowl of chili would hit the spot. Uh, dear, said Dad nervously, did Zoomer just say, on a cold day like today? <laughs> cold day like today? It's spring, summer, and winter. Well, okay then, said Mom. Chilly it is. Now look at him standing on the porch looking around trying to figure out what in the world is going on. And, and they see them riding and some stuff. <laughs> yeah. look, look at the huge dragon. Look at that. Hey, go back to the space. Look at these dragon in the bottom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's lots of neat stuff yeah, there. Cool. Okay, and there they all are, sitting on the nose of a dog dressed in his armor, and he looks Egyptian, and... <laughs> all right. Well, we had some pretty, pretty big tales today, didn't we? There were some things that were quite unbelievable in our stories today. <clears throat> Well, anyway, we want to remind you to stop by the Fayette County Public Library and pick up a packet of activities that would go with the story. But for now, we have to say goodbye. goodbye.